Bismillah, salatu salam ala Rasulullah. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction and for the kind invitation. Uh, I will talk today about bisulcinate treatment for calcinosis in GDM. I will start by a question for the auditorium. If anybody, if you, if you used bisulcinate for treatment, as a treatment for calcinosis in GDM, please raise your hand. So we have maybe five, six, seven people. And from these, how many of the patients improved after using bisulcinate? Like 50% of these patients improved? Zero. So this is the evidence, actually. Case report and case series. So there is no a lot of evidence about bisphosphonate use in calcinosis, but I will try to summarize the evidence what we have in the literature. I have nothing to disclose. And I will start with this interesting case. My face at the beginning of my work in King Adres University, before two years when I came back from Germany, and uh, we presented this case uh, one time in our... Uh, general meeting in Jeddah. Uh, Eight-year-old boy, known case of dermatomyositis in the age of four years. So since four years, he has <coughs> juvenile dermatomyositis and he is on methotrexate, MMF, and colchicine. So his presentation was with erythematous rash, hylotropic rash, good transpapule, so the typical juvenile dermatomyositis with myopathy and calcinosis. <coughs> and at that time, according to the family, it was very severe calcinosis. So his current status in 2023, <coughs> he is still having some, not some severe calcinosis on all over the body with not obviously uh, myopathic changes. Uh, his other systemic review was unremarkable. This was like the, some of the calcinosis is what I could like uh, pictures from this patient. And actually I didn't see severe calcinosis, like such severe calcinosis in my fellowship. What about his investigation from the diagnosis and during follow-up? So for your follow-up, his CK was almost always normal. Uh, other investigations were also within normal range. <clears throat> ANA at the beginning was positive, and we repeated that in 2023, and it was negative. Um, first, he was seen by the neuro, pediatric neurologist. He did Duchenne muscle dystrophy gene. It was negative. And uh, we did uh, the myositis-specific antibody and came back positive with TIF1 gamma, which is associated with severe uh, skin manifestation. And also we did MRI with the myositis protocol and showed some inflammation, and proximal inflammation. So we approved that the patient has active disease, myopathic disease, and also calcinosis still in 2023. And this is the summary of his management from the beginning of the disease. He's received oral steroid methotrexate, then four doses of rituximab because of the calcinosis, <clears throat> they added colchicine and then uh, at the limumab and 2023, uh, at the beginning of 2023, um, they stopped the adalimumab and added MMF with colchicine and methotrexate. So also another question for the audience, how many of you will use now bisphosphonate for this patient? Nobody. IVIG? Also nobody. One IVIG from Jordanian quiz. IVIG plus bisphosphonate. So some of you, start jack inhibitors, and any other treatment? Yeah, MRI showed like inflammatory process, and he still have calcinosis. No CK, no inflammatory markers. We will leave the case, and I will come back again what I did at that time. Let's start a little bit so briefly about the calcinosis in juvenile dermatomyositis. <clears throat> we know that 30% of the patients, they will develop calcinosis in their progression of the disease. And um, risk factors, or like the calcinosis is known as a poor prognostic factor in such cases. Also, the severe muscle cutaneous disease at onset, poor adherence to the medication known as a risk factor. And the majority of the patients they develop calcinosis are the females, and the mean age of calcinosis is five years, and most of them at the beginning of the disease, or uh, actually in the beginning of three years of the disease, so between the first and the third year of illness. Uh, the development of calcinosis is associated with prolonged disease duration, and this is, uh, makes sense. Joint changes, such contractures, skin changes, so active disease, uh, and young age at the diagnosis. What about the risk factors to develop calcinosis? Repetitive trauma also makes sense. Persistent ischemia and the cutaneous inflammation process, especially the interleukin-1 and the TNF-alpha, 
alteration in the function of macrophages and dysregulation of the calcium uh, regulatory proteins, as well as we know now the presence of some autoantibodies. I find this article is interesting and something new for me. At least two patients, uh, they investigate the calcinosis itself, the milk of calcium, and they found that inside this calcinosis there is macrophage and interleukin-6 and interleukin-10, which means we might have in the future some target treatment for these calcinosis. And this interesting review published uh, at the end of 2023, <coughs> there they summarize the, all the case reports and case series in the uh, literature, and unfortunately, not all of the patients received or did have the autoantibodies, but at least what we know that NXP2 is associated with calcinosis, followed by TIF1 gamma, MDA5, and the anti me 2 um, What about the type of calcinosis? We have almost three or four types, subcutaneous tumors like the one here, and the uh, periarticular plaques nodules like the one also here, and some deep calcinosis in tissue or muscles uh, or a mixed form, like in our patient. Uh, also in the review, they reviewed the treatment used in GDM in general, and they found that the bisphosphonate is only like 1.3 or maximum 1.5 of these patients used calcinose, uh, bisphosphonate. So in CARA registry, they did like a survey for the pediatrician, 107 of the pediatricians involved in this survey about calcinosis in GDM, and the majority, they will start with IVIG as an immunodilator treatment, and as alternative treatment will be bisphosphonate. So how does bisphosphonate work, actually? We don't know exactly how it works, but the hypothesis is that it is a potent macrophage activity inhibitors and inhibit the secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines, and maybe because of that we use it also in the CRMO and we have good experience uh, with that. So the most accepted theory is the bisphosphonate act by preventing macrophage action forming calcium phosphate crystals and decreasing bone remodeling. So it makes sense also to use it maybe in the calcinosis in patient with GDM or any connective tissue disease. So let's see what's, what kind of, I, of cases in the literature used bisphosphonate. This is like 13 years old girl with SLE and GDM on an overlap syndrome treated with steroid, IVMG, methotrexate, hydroxychloroquine, rituximab, so the standard treatment. The myocyte is improved, but she still have gower sign. So they did CT or pan CT and they found some calcinosis superficial and deep also. So they started here on alindronate orally 10 milligram per kg and after 10 months they could stop the medication without any side effect. So they have good result with bisphosphonate in these patients. Another patient, nine year old with GDM with steroid, methotrexate, hydroxychloroquine. After three years, he developed calcinosis in the small finger and they started him on pamidronate as a treatment, and also he improved dramatically after the bisphosphonate treatment. 11 years with GDM treated with steroid, hydroxychloroquine, NSAID. Also after three years, so at the beginning of the, of the progression of the disease, uh, she developed calcinosis and elbow botox with poor adherence to therapy, started on pamidronate every three months, but there was no obvious improvement, maybe because of the adherence of the treatment, that's what they mentioned in the, little, in the articles, but what we know the permitronate is the IV, so I'm not sure how they evaluate the adherence of the treatment. So maybe the other treatment was much important than permitronate in this patient, and she didn't take it. Again, seven years old, diagnosed with GDM and calcinosis, started on steroid, methotrexate, and hydroxychloroquine as a standard treatment, started on permitronate every three months, and significant improvement. This is with the most case series in the literature with six patients. Uh, almost three of them, they started on permidronate and three on alindronate. And the patient with alindronate, two of them, there was no effect. And the one with the permidronate IV, there was much effective uh, treatment for the calcinosis. Of course, they received also different regimen. Ten years old, diagnosed with GDM with lung involvement <coughs> and calcinosis, started on steroid and NMF. For the calcinosis, he received alindronate, 70 milligram per week, and we can see here the massive calcinosis at the beginning of the disease, and at the end, it improved with alindronate, or maybe with the other regimen also. 
six years old with GDM and calcinosis, started on steroid, methotrexate, and for the calcinosis, diltiazem, colchicine, no effect, rather progression of the disease, or for the calcinosis, then they started her on pamidronate, one milligram per kg per day for three days, every three months. And the x-ray, for the same patient, I confirmed that one was with inspiration or with expiration. Uh, interestingly, here, the calcinosis at the beginning, and we see much improvement after the pamidronate treatment. 12 years old with GDM and calcinosis, started on methotrexate, steroid, and for the calcinosis, diltiazem, also no effect pamidronate, and much improvement. Before the last case, seven years old girl with GDM and calcinosis, also on steroid, methotrexate, IVIG, cyclosporin, rituximab. Myositis improved, but the calcinosis is still active. Azathioprine, colchicine, again, no, uh, no improvement. And she developed bullous liquefying calcinosis on her feet, interestingly. The calcinosis is also very severe, and after treating her with pamidronate, much improved. 14-year-old girl with GDM and calcinosis, also steroid, colchicine, and this patient had surgical removal of some of the calcinosis, but we can see that they cannot remove all the calcinosis in this patient, and they started here in um, regimen from the bisphosphonates, a little bit weird from our... Uh, Standard of care, they gave her per year two milligram per kg per day, but interestingly, she also improved after two years. So it might work, but we don't know exactly why, or is it working alone because it's bisphosphonate, or because we use it with methotrexate or with steroid, or maybe if we did not use pamidronate or bisphosphonate at all, it will improve with the time, who knows. This is the last patient, six, year, six years old boy with GDM and developed calcinosis at the age of three years, treated with steroid methotrexate. Also for the calcinosis, diltiazem, no effect. Started on alintronate orally, 10 milligram per kg per day and improvement after one year. So I summarized from the literature 17 cases, they treated with bisphosphonate, six of them with alintronate with almost 50% improvement, 10 from elf with from 11 with pamidronate, with much improvement, but still it's only case reports, and we don't know exactly the ant antibody signature in these patients, if it's different the treatment or not, and almost all these patients, they have uh, ongoing immune suppressive treatment with the bisphosphonate or uh, with the alindronate or with pamidronate. So what is the take home messages for us, and for me, the evidence of using bisphosphonate in GDM patient with calcinosis has a low level of evidence, <coughs> and if we want to use bisphosphonate, then maybe pamidronate is a better choice. But I think, and a lot of the people in the literature say multi-target treatment should be used in such patient, and aggressive treatment in the beginning is much better than using bisphosphonate late. And please treat each patient individually and try to find the best medication for your patient, even if he didn't improve on IVIG, steroid, or bisphosphonate, then use another choice until he will improve. So almost all the patient, they will improve in one type of medication. So I think it's, in the future, we will have more immune phenotyping of these patients, so we'll know much more about the patient's type and what kind of cytokines or pathway is uh, dysregulated in this, this patient, and maybe we will target this treatment. And with the study showing that macrophage and interleukin-1 and 6 in calcinosis, maybe we will use in one day anakinra. Who knows? At the end, and, uh, I would like to thank the people from King Abdullah's University. They did a great effort, and I think it's their right to thank them for their effort. Dr. Maab Sawaleh, Maryam Al Haza, Antinan Basahel, Baraa Sawaf, Khulud Bakhit, Abdul Aziz Al Shahri, Hala Junaidib, and Al Hanouf Sharif. Um, unfortunately, the poster session didn't went like what we expected, but no, it's nobody uh, false. But I think they deserve at least uh, thanks for their effort, and I apologize as a mentor for them. <laughs> also, we tried or we applied for oral abstract, and we got accepted for one in the main program after uh, 
one hour almost. But uh, I expected that the name of the presenter will be in the uh, table, but not my name, because I will not present this one. And it will be presented by Dr. Amtinan Basahal. She did a, also a great effort, and I think she deserves also that her name will be on the table, or at least I mentioned in the lecture. So she will present after one hour, and not me. Thank you very much. And according to the, my patient, I started him on IVIG, and he improved dramatically. I didn't use business on it. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for the presentation. Uh, any comments? Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for the uh, overview. Thank you very much. Um, I mean, I, most people who have positive results, they will publish in the literature. But people with negative results, they will not bother to go and publish in the literature. So from experience, none of the patients I tried, uh, Pamidrone actually worked. Um, and, and the idea is that if you are aggressive with your treatment for the JDM, hopefully you will prevent the calcinosis from happening. But the most difficult group of patients where the disease is actually quiet, but the calcinosis is still there and progressing. And, and a lot of people believe that maybe there is a different mechanism for the calcinosis itself, as you, as you mentioned. Uh, now we are looking at um, the use of sodium thiosulfate. I don't know if anybody here had an experience with that. But uh, a lot of people now are talking about that. And there is a clinical trial, I think, currently happening in the US using even IV sodium thiosulfate. I think we're all waiting for that. Hopefully, it will be a positive result. But there is also topical uh, sodium thiosulfate that we are actually trying now in one of our patients. And hopefully, we will see some positive, uh, positive results. But bisphosphonate now, a lot of people are moving away from it, actually. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for this uh, lovely presentation. Regarding using bisphosphonate, um, for how long you will see the response? I will wait for one year, two years, because, uh, you know, sometimes you are giving one dose every, like, three months, or, but you mentioned that one milligram per kg for three consecutive days every three months. If, um, each one has different protocol, but for how long I will wait before seeing the response? And the second question is regarding systemic uh, scleroderma. Uh, some, uh, they will have calcinosis, especially in the fingers. This will work with them or not? In, in the literature, they use like 10 months for the at least uh, duration used for bisphosphonate and usually one year, one plus minus. So I think after one year is like a uh, good duration to assess if the calcinosis improved or not. Uh, regarding the calcinos in uh, scleroderma, <coughs> there's not a lot of data about bisphosphonate in calcinos in scleroderma, but I believe it will not help in scleroderma. This is my own belief and experience. Uh, just a simple practical question. Um, was the um, dose used in all uh, literature that, or case series that you mentioned unify? And was there any difference between different agents of biphosphonates like pamidronate, zeledronic acid? We have in our center zeledronic acid. Was there any difference? Good questions. Almost all the cases used one or one to two milligram per kg. Besides one uh, study, I think in Egypt or in Tunisia, they use two milligram per kg per year. So they start with 15 milligram, then 30, then 40, and uh, together it was like two milligram per kg per year. So it's less dose than the other regimen, what we know, but they have interestingly all positive results. And uh, the other question was the uh, pamidronate or zeledronic acid or another study. Yeah. There's not a lot of data about zeledronic acid in CRMO, in GDM in connective tissue disease, I think it's the same. But if I have patient and I have pamidronate, I will use pamidronate. If I don't have pamidronate, then maybe I will go with silitronic acid. Mohammed. And I think this is a very important topic. And I think all of us face difficulty in treating calcinosis in JDM patients. I think I would agree with the doctor that probably the most important thing is the aggressive therapy early on with early diagnosis because the later you wait, probably there is more likelihood that these patients might develop calcinosis. 
And once it calcified, it would be probably difficult to treat. And the response will be quite variable because we have seen patients where they have sheets of calcinosis who improved in bisphosphonate along with the other therapies. So it's not just bisphosphonate alone. So it's a combined therapy with IVIG, methotrexate, and sometimes using even biologics and colchicine as well. We have used sodium thiosulfate in few patients, but the response was not optimal as we, as we thought. Uh, this is uh, the point number one. The point number two, I think an important point in those who get calcinosis is to pick them early because early on the regions will be liquid or liquefied. So we, we used in um, a, a case series uh, in our institution, uh, procedures called barbotage along with the interventional radiologist where the, the radiologist would uh, put large hole needles at the top and the bottom, and he would irrigate the calcinotic area where he would remove the material. Then he would in inject steroid. And the response was great in those three patients that we reported. So parpotage will be important, but the early uh, detection will be very important. So the patient need to be instructed that as they see any swelling anywhere, so they need to uh, in, uh, like communicate with the physicians. Uh, before it gets cal uh, calcified and it will be difficult to treat. And, and this is the take home message treat early. And if you have carcinosis, think of active disease. And if you want to treat multiple regimen, and if it's still carcinosis, then don't give up. Try even the one with the in, uh, national, in uh, or colchicine or alindronate. So don't give up on multi target treatment, but treat early. This is the most important thing. So I, I never saw such patient in Germany. And this patient has like severe calcinosis for five years. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed.